I'm Rory Johnston with News Channel 5. Pleased to be with you this morning. I'm also uh, a resident of the city of Franklin, so it's great to be here with you. Uh, before we begin, I would like to introduce the city administrator of the city of Franklin, Eric Stuckey, who will lead us in prayer. I just want to uh, want to say real quick, uh, I'm not a pastor, but I am a pastor's kid, so I've <laughs> had a little bit of experience, so hopefully this gets the job done. Welcome. We're thrilled that such a great crowd is here to, to this morning to, to take in this part of our community and, and uh, just join me in prayer real quick. Father God, we thank you for the many blessings we have each and every day. We thank you for the blessing of this great community of Franklin. We thank you for the many people who give so much to this community, those who work for the city, those that serve, and, and so many organizations that make our community special. We thank you for bringing us together. We ask that you bless us each day. We ask that we live lives that honor you, that in service and all that we do, all that we say, all that we are. We ask for blessings upon the breakfast that we've had this morning, that it strengthens us in service. Be with us each day. Be with this great community. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Eric. The Franklin Fire Department recently held an award ceremony to recognize the accomplishments of their personnel in 2010 and 2011. And for the first time ever, they awarded the Medal of Valor. Captain Thomas Chaffin and Firefighter Chris Bull received the Medal of Valor for rescuing Firefighter Wiley Jones from a house fire in the West Haven subdivision on October 2nd, 2010, after he was injured in an explosion. Captain Thomas Chaffin and Firefighters Chris Bull and Wiley Jones will lead us this morning in the Pledge of Allegiance. the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen, and thank you for your service. And more. Mayor of Franklin is the 31st mayor and second physician to lead the city of Franklin. Ken practiced orthopedic surgery for more than 28 years and gained recognition on a state and national level as a leader. Outside activities include assisting to bring a new campus to Williamson County for Columbia State Community College and he currently serves as a chairman of the Columbia State Foundation Board. He maintains a passion for delivering health care to the underserved, and he is medical director for the Shalom Foundation, which provides free surgery to poor Guatemalan children. And he was highly involved in the opening of a new outpatient surgery center for the foundation in Guatemala City. And most of you may not know him, or may know him rather, as, yes, the dance champion in Franklin, <laughs> after he won the Dancing with the Nashville Stars Mirror Ball. How impressive, huh? Here he is now, our mayor, Dr. Ken Moore. You know, I think I'll invite John Shore to play. You know, he's a state worker now, and he's got plenty of time. Ken Moore. I wonder what he wants. What? Words with friends. You know, when I was mayor, I didn't have time to play games on my smartphone. I guess I got everything in such good shape that he doesn't have to work as hard. But I'm the commissioner of transportation, and I'm busy as can be, so I can't play this game with him. Got you, Bev. You'll never beat this word. <laughs> I can't think he's so smart. Pearl, that's not a word. No, not Rogers Anderson. Matt Largent, he's a lot geekier. 
Ken wants to play words with friends. That is a mayor that embraces technology. All Rogers ever wants to do is play Scrabble. Williamson, we've got to work hard to beat Matt. And you know, Dr. Ken Moore, the mayor of Franklin, all he wants to do is play electronic games. Brandy Blanton. Yeah, she'll be a tough competitor. Ken wants me to play word with friends, but I don't know how to do it. Will this work? I don't think so. Words with friends? We don't have time for that. We gotta get him on stage. Where is he? Ken, quit playing that game. You're supposed to be doing the state of the city. <laughs> This is so much fun. Thank you for being here this morning. <clears throat> Rory, thank you for the kind introduction this morning and thank you for being here. I think this is getting to be an annual thing to have you and we certainly welcome you since you're one of our Franklin residents. Wasn't that video fun? I had great fun doing it and I hope you enjoyed it and kind of got you in the right mood for what's happening in Franklin. I'd like to recognize some very special people first of all. Uh, people that I work with on a daily basis and in all of our meetings, that's our city aldermen. Vice Mayor Michael Skinner, Alderman Ann Peterson, Alderman Pearl Bransford, Alderman Br Clyde Barnhill, Alderman Brandy Blanton, Alderman Bev Berger, Alderman Margaret Martin, and Alderman Dana McClendon. If you're here, please stand up and let's recognize you. And if you're an elected official for the county, would love to uh, recognize you. Please stand up. And if Rogers Anderson's here, good morning, Rogers. And any other elected officials that I have not seen this morning, welcome. And I'd love to recognize you and uh, recognize what you do for our community. And next, I would like to uh, mention the generosity of the factory. Rod Pewitt and Calvin Lahue have been very generous in giving us this space this morning uh, to hold this uh, event. The Marriott Hotel has been very generous in donating the coffee and the tablecloths. And Franklin Breakfast Rotary Club supplied the breakfast. So let's give them a nice hand. <clears throat> And thank you for the dedication of the State of the City team. Eric Stuckey, Ray Folia, Vicki Parr, Monique McCullough, Robert Mott, and Melissa Ryerson, all, and all the volunteers in the city, and all of our city staff that have the booths in the back. I'd love for you to stand and be recognized. And thank you for what you do and how much time you've put in on this project. And I'd like to declare today as Administrative Professionals Day. So those are our administrative professionals in our community, and particularly in the city, we'd like to thank them for what they do every day. And my wife, Linda, is here this morning. Uh, she's my special support. So stand up, Linda, and thank you. Wherever, I, I can't see you, but there you go. You know, Franklin is a town with a past. Really. <laughs> We're a historic city where certain things happened and shaped our history. And we're a city res that respects that history. And we believe in preserving our heritage. At the same time, we're a city that looks to be a modern community that balances that preservation on one hand and the other hand a thriving and growing, rapidly growing community. So today, we're going to talk about shaping our future. As a city, we've been very active in strategic planning based on community input and recognized needs. This input comes from a number of sources. It comes from meetings, conversations, visioning sessions, community surveys, 
staff input, and also social media. Recently, I've been asking the question, what do you want Franklin to be in 25 years? And I've, I've received some interesting comments, and I, I bet some of them ring a bell with you when you listen. A very common one is, I don't want Franklin to lose its charm. I want Franklin to continue to be a premier location to live and work. And this is one that got me is, I want to be where we are now in 25 years. And I looked at this person, I said, what? And they said, no, I want it to still be a place where people want to live and work. And the other comment is, I want Franklin to be a place where I can walk, where I can bike, where I can connect to all areas of the city without ever getting in my car. So I hope some of those maybe rang a bell, and I'm sure you can share your, your stories with me for what your vision is after the meeting. But it's through careful planning that all of this happens. And for the past year, we've, because of careful planning, we've had a very successful year. So I'm ready to start playing the game. And the first word I'm going to play is done. And that's for double points. We're in the second year of a pilot project of curbside recycling. We're continually seeing participation rates in excess of 50%. And we're beating our diversion goal of 15% by weight of our solid waste. We're in the midst of a public-private partnership in the city of Franklin with a company that installed a solar array in our wastewater plant. <clears throat> since we, <clears throat> excuse me, since we met last for the last State of the City address, the Franklin Theater has returned to life, bringing great music, arts, entertainment, and movies to our vibrant downtown area. I've never been shy about my desire to create, be part of creating a new campus for Columbia State in Williamson County. And in January, we broke ground for a new campus because of a $6.5 million special uh, award from the state of Tennessee. Representative Charles Sargent, has had the same passion as many of you in this room to bring this campus, bring the campus to a new location. And he deserves special recognition for his work in doing that at the state legislature. I think this fits nicely into the puzzle because it fills several important roles. First, it fills, brings us a premier uh, educational institution we can call our own. And then secondly, its location on Liberty Pike is going to help stimulate economic development in that entire South Carruthers corridor. This year, with the retirement of long-term employee Gary Luffman, who worked for the city for 32 years, reminds me that the city of Franklin is a great place to work. Gary's retirement after 30 year, two years was no anomaly. It's, it's a common thing that we have people that love to work at the city of Franklin, and they spend their entire career here. And then we had the elections in October where the people of Franklin chose to return three at-large aldermen, Alderman Peterson, Barnhill, and Bransford back to their positions on the board and added a new team member, Brandy Blanton. Personally, for me, it's a humbling experience to be elected your mayor. The city acquired the former 84 lumber site along Columbia Avenue to serve as our new consolidated public works facility. This will allow us to consolidate our streets, fleet maintenance, and water maintenance, or water departments, into one location. Not only does it make a more efficient operation for them, but there's an opportunity to now share equipment, and also it saves the city money. The Lowhead Dam project continues to move forward to improve the Harpeth River as a natural resource for recreation, as a fish habitat, and making it one of the few free-flowing free -flowing streams in the state of Tennessee. 
The city received a half million dollars from the state of Tennessee for the construction of a road into the eastern flank battlefield. And right now you may have uh, seen this morning the widening of the southeast section of Mack Hatcher is underway. And this will add capacity to our roads. And we continue to receive accolades as a community, this year being recognized as one of the top places to live in America by Relocate America. And yes, it was a tie at the county fair. <laughs> but I'm the one with the mirror ball, Mayor Anderson. <laughs> You know, all of these accomplishments came about because of strategic long-range planning. So let's try another word for triple points. That's tech. Technology has a reputation, Franklin has a reputation for being on the cusp of technology. Currently, we're in the final phases of completing a fiber optic loop around Franklin that will serve several purposes. First, it will expand our connections to the Traffic Operations Center so that traffic can be managed in a more efficient manner and more intelligent manner. Second, it provides a Wi-Fi network throughout the city where city workers can access uh, the internet and the city servers real time just as if they were sitting in front of their desk. Again, producing an efficiency of service and saving money. And third, it serves to tie us to an 800 megahertz communication system that links us to emergency operations in other areas in our region and includes their fire and their police and their administration. But most importantly, in the event of a disaster, we will be able to respond quickly and efficiently because of this strategic planning that we've done. But High tech doesn't stop in the MIT department. We also have a very proactive communications division in our city. They have almost 5,000 followers on Facebook. More than 13,600 videos have been viewed on YouTube where the city has made videos of certain events and uh, things where citizens can see those. And then we have 2,500 followers on Twitter, and we just recently added Pinterest. You know, these are more, these tools help us harness social media to improve social engagement, get feedback from the citizens, strengthen emergency response, yes, and establish greater transparency. In fact, Facebook was one of the most heavily used sites during the flood of May, 1000, May 2010. And also during the recent, uh, this past summer when we had difficulty with our water, we held a virtual town hall meeting on Facebook. So I would urge you to follow us on Facebook to get information about the city and what's happening. Next, I want to play the word service. Franklin continues to try to strive to be business friendly to our small businesses and improve that image. So what are we doing to improve that image? Our greatest growth in jobs occurs with the companies that we already have here. Last year, over 2,000 jobs were added in our area. Since becoming mayor, I've made it a priority to visit many Franklin businesses. And we ask questions like, what are your needs? How can we communicate better with you? And already we're gaining information to assist in being more business friendly by creating those new relationships. It's been inspirational to witness the creativity of many of the businesses in our community, the ingenuity, the innovation, and to find out that they love to call Franklin home to their business. We've created a predictable turnaround on plan review with fixed target dates for completion and we're regularly beating those deadlines. Plus we have the opportunity to submit and review plans electronically which reminds me of one of my friends I saw at City Hall the other day. He had a stack of 10 plans. He was doing a small addition to his garage 
And that's going to be a thing of the past. Stroke of a key, he'll be able to submit those plans and have a very predictable turnaround to know when he can move forward with his project. And now people can schedule their inspections electronically. An important thing that's under the radar that happened this year is combining the concept plan and the regulating plan into one process. That one effort, that one process has eliminated 60 days from the approval process for projects to come to the city. And I think that the Board of Mayor and Aldermen should be recognized along with the Planning Commission, staff, and the development community for your work collaboratively to bring this forward and improve our process. And now we're looking at additional options for projects over 10,000 square feet where projects could go for external review and they could pick the timeline that they wanted to have their project approved. And staff is not resting on their laurels. They continue to work on a daily basis to find other options to shorten the approval process and make it less painful. Our long-range long success depends on the important, this important strategic planning for being business friendly. Now this is a tough one, connect. Our streets are either funded by, uh, funded locally or through the state. By law, approval has to go through the Metropolitan Planning Organization for our region. Their task at looking at these projects in a 20 to 25 year window and developing strategic plans that include all regional roads, transit, walking, biking trails, no matter how they're being paid for. We recently completed some important projects, McEwen Phase 3, Nickel Mill, and we just approved funding for uh, McEwen Extension, design of McEwen 4, and the intersection of Carlisle, and last night we approved the uh, design of entirety of South Carruthers. We haven't funded South Carruthers yet, uh, but many other projects such as Hillsborough Road have been funded, and we anticipate that we will be bidding the first phase of Hillsborough Road by the end of the year. I sit on the board of the Metropolitan Planning Organization with other mayors of the region, and Michael Skipper is the executive director of that group. Many of you know him. He's a bright young man with great experience and expertise. And I asked him about the future of transportation for our region. And his comments, which I'll encapsulate a bit, were that the future of transportation is a modern, efficient transportation system that's critical for fostering economic expansion and competitiveness. There's three important components of what Michael said. Economic expansion tied to transportation, modern system, tried to transportation, and competitiveness tied to transportation. So how do we do this? Educate, 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 yes. Education groups such as the Transit Alliance and the Citizens Transit Leadership Academy are important. We're working actively to increase options for our region. We have almost 100 van pools that leave from Williamson County daily. Uh, we're looking at the option of dedicated lanes on the interstate. Uh, we do have regional buses. In fact, uh, all of the regional buses around the Nashville area have shown double digit uh, increases in ridership as we've seen the gas prices tick up. Same is true for our 91X. But what we have to do is create a vision of what is possible just as other communities have done. And these other communities that have created that vision are our competitors. The Charlotte, North Carolina, Austin, Texas, Denver, Colorado. Uh, they've all created a vision and good strategic long range planning for transportation. And then lastly, we will have to look at how to fund 
this long range transit long range transit option I'm now going to play it safe SAFE and it should fit nicely right here we're one of the safest communities in Tennessee and it's for many reasons our firemen and policemen are professionals they train regularly to be prepared in case of emergencies some of the examples of police department activities include training exercises that occur when we have festivals downtown they have these incident command perspective training exercises where they simulate something going on whether it's a lost person a lost child or whether it's some type of uh, uh, tragedy also the Franklin Police Department has a crime, crime prevention outreach initiatives which include citizen engagement through things such as Twitter, smartphone applications, uh, community program involvement, they have the anonymous tip program, highly visible non-traditional things such as you saw this morning, the horse patrol, segways, and now you see walking patrols in our community and also bicycles. And a program that I've found to be very interesting that was initiated by Chief Rohinsky is Coffee with the Clergy, where we've had over 35 of the clergy of our community uh, meet with the uh, police department to learn about the programs that the police department has that can help prevent crime in our community and encourage a safe community and build uh, relationships. Yes, creating partnerships through the community uh, I really like the word relationships much better than I do partnerships because that's what it's about is relationships. Franklin continues to be one of the safest places that I mentioned in America. Our crime rates continue to drop. The latest report shows that our crime decreased 7% compared to last year. And the overall crime rate of Franklin is 56 percent below the state average. Our fire department under the lead leadership of Chief Garzarak has achieved a fire SO rating of two. That's good. In fact it's the best in the state. And they now offer advanced medical response status with over 32 paramedics providing advanced life support to our citizens when they respond to emergency situations. The Tennessee City Management Association awarded jointly the Excellence in Municipal Governance Award for our automatic aid system for fire uh, response to both Franklin and Brentwood. And I think you will agree that all these things indicate good long-range strategic planning works. You learned this morning of, in fact, you saw the fireman that saved a life, a special thing. Um, their heroism, I'm glad to recognize today. What we didn't hear this morning is that they saved five lives this last year. It's amazing. And it all starts with training and includes long range planning. So I ask us this morning to applaud our police and fire uh, departments that keep us safe. And if you're a policeman or a fireman, stand up and let everybody see who you are. Thank you. This is a touchy word. Five letter word begins with an M, money. <laughs> Our finances continue to improve. We've weathered the economic storm of the past three years. We've reduced our budget by $7 million since 2008 without any loss of service. And in fact, in many areas, we've actually increased services. We're working smarter and more efficiently than we ever have before. We continue to be a AAA rated credit. Sales tax revenues continue to grow and are starting are at pre-recession numbers. Through smart management, 
We identified the ability to refund $19.2 million of water and sewer bonds and over the life of the uh, bonds save over $3 million. Our accounting department and our chief financial officer just recently was recognized for the 20th consecutive time for their accounting excellence. We've addressed the employee pension plan. You've seen in the news that many cities are strapped with uh, inability to fund those pension plans. And we've identified the things that it takes to make our plan sustainable, but at the same time, make our plan just as competitive as any other plan that an employee would be looking at. We continue to work daily on saving money. And there's some great examples. One is the infrared paving truck. Looks like a tanning bed on a boom, but it's the pride of uh, Joe York and the streets department. Uh, this is new technology. And instead of digging the street up, they're able to take this equipment and heat the street uh, and save thousands of dollars. This past month, they saved over $9,000 over what conventional uh, repair would have cost. And then I mentioned public-private joint ventures, such as the solar fields uh, at the wastewater plant. Now this is an easy one, plan. Two years ago, the city embarked on a two-year plan to study and develop a plan for water, wastewater, and stormwater for the next 25 to 30 years. I'd like for, to take a look at a video that talks about this commodity that is critical to our survival, but at the same time, we take it for granted every single day. Every day, citizens use and drink water. When we turn on the water, we expect our water to be clean and safe. When it goes down the drain, most don't think of it again. But where does Franklin's water come from? Where does it go once we're done with it? What is the city doing to be a good steward of our resources as our community continues to grow and prosper? The Harpeth River is the city's main water resource. This is where it all begins and ends. The Harpeth River is impacted by virtually every decision we make related to water management here in Franklin. Today, it is an important source of drinking water to the community. It also receives highly treated water from our wastewater process and conveys away stormwater from the community. In providing these resources, we also have to meet ever-increasing state and federal regulations. Now, when we look at the Harpeth River, we know it's an important resource. And to take care of that resource, we're going to need a plan. A plan that balances the need to support our growing and prosperous community while also meeting these regulations and making the river a resource for the future of our community. Two years ago, the city of Franklin was the first in Tennessee to embark on an integrated water resource plan that can be implemented over the next 30 years. The resulting plan combines all facets of water and its interaction with the Harpeth River. The plan lays a road map for the city to improve aging infrastructure, storm water, drinking water, and wastewater management all while meeting the needs of our fast-paced growth and regulatory requirements. Integrated water resource planning is a concept that's been around for a while but very proactive from the standpoint of someone in our region of the country. This process allowed us to get citizens, regulatory agencies, community agencies, and many others together in a group of workshops to really develop what that plan would be for the next 30 years. This process allows us to talk openly about both technical and non-technical issues so that we could address what the needs of this community are and could really come up with a plan that we felt like merged the water resources of the Harpeth River, our wastewater system, the water system, the reclaimed water system, and the stormwater system together so that we were doing projects that were beneficial to the community and not just to that particular uh, aspect of, of treatment. Ultimately, the recommendations will mean an investment in the future. 
Compared to the current average water rate in the region, City of Franklin water customers pay about $5 less per month. These rates basically recover the cost of operations. With future investment, the rates will continue to be competitive with areas faced with similar challenges. This is a wonderful opportunity for us to control our own destiny without others controlling it for us. It's a long-term investment to help improve our drinking water quality, as well as expand our wastewater treatment capacity to provide for long-term growth and development, all while protecting the quality of the Harpeth River. This is not an overnight process, though. This is a planning horizon of 30 years. Uh, but it's important for us to plan now for the costs and these projects so we don't have to pay later when we may not be meeting regulatory standards. The integrated water resource plan process resulted in a portfolio of projects developed by all the stakeholders involved. One of the most exciting projects that could be implemented over the next few years is the upgrade of the water treatment plant and distribution system to improve water quality. The existing treatment plant was built in the 1950s. Much of the equipment has not been upgraded since 1968. This particular mixing system has been used every day for the past 43 years. The upgrades will include ultraviolet disinfection and advanced oxidation, which will modernize these processes for the future. It will also help to reduce our dependence on chlorine and better manage taste and odor issues. Another project that could happen over the next three years is improvement to the distribution system. This project will upgrade the efficiency of how water gets from the water plant to your household tap. An additional key component and longer term project within the 30-year plan includes biosolid treatment and disposal. Biosolids are treated waste material. The current process is costly, over a million dollars a year, and inefficient due to having to truck the solids about 95 miles to a landfill. A solar drying method could save the city tens of millions of dollars over the next few decades and the byproduct could be sold or reused for landscaping materials. In the proposed 30-year integrated water resource plan, longer-term projects include additional wastewater treatment capacity to meet our future growth, conservation efforts, and stream bank restoration. When we look at this, we're really looking at the long-term future of our community. We're not just solving a problem for a few years down the road or meeting a specific regulation. We're trying to be a community that is good stewards of our water, of our river, but also a community that grows and prospers. This plan is designed to meet the needs of the community for future generations, for my kids and yours. That was produced by our own city staff, and I think it's very informative as to what we're trying to do. And I want to emphasize that this study that we have just completed involved multiple stakeholders. It involved citizens, just as you. It involved regulators from the state. It involved government representatives. It involved representatives from the other water and utility districts in our region and it envi involved environmental groups. The results are best are based on the best and most current evidence that's available. This wasn't an emotional decision on how we reached the results. It wasn't a decision that was based on any agenda by any one particular person but it was based on technical evidence uh, that we could obtain. But here's the bottom line. There will be a need for substantial investments in these projects going forward over the next 30 years. We're looking at somewhere in the range of $200 million, ultimately, to modernize our system over the next 30 years. And this cost will be borne by ratepayers and also developers. This problem is not unique to Franklin, but it's one that's occurring all across America because of our aging infrastructure. And so the decisions that we make now are not really options anymore, but are rapidly becoming necessities to avoid 
mandated renovations and also penalties if we don't act proactively. Solid waste is another area that we've taken for granted for a long, long time. Five years ago, we took $5 million from the general fund to supplement the operation of our trash. I'm glad to report that now we're less than a million dollars from the general fund to support our solid waste initiative. And now we're at a time where we can narrow and possibly completely erase that contribution from the general fund so that solid waste acts more like an enterprise fund and pays for itself based on those fees that you pay every month. And we have the opportunity to potentially lock in for 14 years a deal of both hauling and disposal of our waste. The other thing that the city has been a leader in uh, this year is gathering regional, uh, re gathering uh, representatives from counties and cities in our area to talk about the challenges of solid waste for the future. Uh, we visited with the uh, uh, Tennessee Department of Envir Environment and Conservation and discussed with them our worries. And we have their attention. They've dedicated staff time to work with this group to come up with solutions for the long term. We don't have a result yet, but the subject is being studied actively, and as I said, we do have the attention of the regulatory agencies. And again, this is one more evidence of long-range strategic planning. Next is, word is destination. Tourism has grown significantly over the past year past years, and we're now one of the top tourist destinations in Tennessee. And we're also a top destination for athletic contests at our ball fields, at our parks, and some of the private facilities that are here in Franklin. Currently, 25% of the hotel motel tax that we collect goes to fund the Williamson County Visitors and Convention Bureau. Three years ago, we found we had a six to one investment, return on our investment. Then there was eight to one investment, return on our investment. And now, 10 to one investment for those dollars that we're investing uh, in the Bureau. If you haven't heard that in May, we're hosting the NCAA Women's Golf Championship at the Legends Club. And in just two years, we're gonna have the sexquicentennial of the Battle of Franklin, which will be a premier event. You know, our visitors are kind to us. We give them great memories, we give them a good time, and yeah, they leave their money behind. So, well, I've only got three letters left, and I'm playing the word aha. Bev would say that that's not a word, but it is to me. You know, one of the privileges I have as mayor is that I get to go a lot of places and talk to different groups. And one of the groups that I had the opportunity to talk to was a group that was of many ages of kids that I was supposed to mentor. I was supposed to tell them about my career from medicine to politics. And so I gave my presentation and I had great response from the kids. All of them had great questions. But there was one boy that he looked at me, and excuse me, he said, what do you do when your daddy's been in jail? And he has paid his time and can't find a job. Wow. I don't know what my answer was, but I remember that question. Or the fourth grader over at Poplar Grove when I was doing a reading to them, I could see he just couldn't wait to ask me a question. And I said, okay, you. And he said, does the mayor have a jet plane? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, unfortunately, no. But you're working on it. But I'm working on it, yeah. <laughs> Maybe start out with just a twin, twin engine. <laughs> or the uh, letter I got from a second grade class at Walnut Grove. 
uh, where Lisa wrote me a note thanking me for coming and uh, she said, uh, are you the person that makes the laws? You know, like going to school? And she said, you've ins I don't think she used the word inspired, but she says, when I grow up, I want to be mayor. And then she had three or four little periods and it said, of another city. <laughs> I, was glad that, I was glad to see that. And then a number of years ago, we adopted Delta Company uh, from Fort Campbell. And we've been very supportive of their families uh, and the troops uh, when they've been home and when they've been uh, overseas. And we had the opportunity to welcome them home this year. And it came my plight to have to read the names of the ones that didn't come home. You know, these are the challenges of being mayor. It's a great job, though, and I appreciate the opportunity to do it. And Franklin, it's your move now. So thank you very much, and God bless. And Lori, let's take some questions. Thank you get this chair, yeah. Mayor. Thank, thank you for you. being here. I hope you haven't got real hard ones. We'll see. <laughs> this is our version of, brief version of uh, Open Line on News Channel 5 Plus. A little direct questioning. Uh, we did take some questions, folks, a lot of questions on Facebook in advance of this, and we also videotaped some questions from youth leadership. And of course, we asked you for some questions. We have a few of those ready as well. First, we want to go to the video screens. We have a couple of questions uh, to start with from some young people. Take a look. In 20 years, I wanted to come back here with a job. Would there be jobs to have? And what would they be? And how would he help to make the job market better for my generation? Good question, That's a right? Great off the question. Bat. Yeah, wow. And I think we're doing a lot of things. Uh, number one, we're very fortunate. We live in a community with a great quality of life, with a very good education system. Mm -hmm. uh, our tax rates are very low. So we are very ben business friendly. And we do have outreach programs where we are encouraging businesses to come and locate in Franklin and expand in Franklin. So I'm glad to report that all projections are good for this young man because. Uh, over the next uh, 20 years, we're going to be one of the top job producers in America. So I think that he will have a job when he comes back. Great. That Leadership Franklin group, I got to speak to them. It's Youth Leadership Franklin. Great group of kids and just so bright, so inspirational. And, you know, we hear so many, we see a lot of negative things sometimes about kids. Kids are great. We've got some of the best kids in the world here in Franklin. I know, my daughter's about to turn 11 and she's smarter than I want her to be, unfortunately. <laughs> it's crazy. You'll be about the right intelligence when, you, when yeah. she's about 30. Oh my. All right, this is uh, from Facebook from uh, Brandon Mark LeClaire. He asked Mayor, what kind of efforts are being taken to ensure the lower income neighborhoods of Franklin are being rid of drug use, crime, lack of property maintenance, vandalism, home invasions, will a time come when most all neighborhoods will be family oriented? Well, I think every neighborhood in Franklin is family oriented. And I think every neighborhood in Franklin has those challenges. There's no area of Franklin that's immune from uh, potential crime or drug use. And so it's because of these community outreach programs that the police department has that I mentioned earlier in my talk that we are able to make Franklin a safer and better community. Okay. Uh, Jessica Cole Johnson writes, when will sidewalks from the factory to downtown be installed? Okay, go ahead. It's a popular one. In our current budget, uh, we're reviewing, uh, it looks like we may have the funds to uh, uh, fund a sidewalk from downtown to the area of the factory. Uh, so we do have some uh, fees that are coming from the, some of the new development around uh, the factory and across the street from Harlandsdale. So we hope that will become a reality. 
Uh, Michael David Davis writes, when is, and you mentioned this, uh, touched on this a little bit, when is South Carruthers going to connect into Ladd Park? I don't have an exact date yet. I can give you the date of 840, uh, but we are working on uh, South Carruthers. We think that's an important project to connect all the new development that's projected to occur south of Murfreesboro Road and uh, on the east side of the interstate. So last night I mentioned that we did uh, uh, elect to go ahead and fund uh, the redesign that needs to be done on that project and we'll work to find some way to uh, fund that as soon as we can. Big growth area down there. Big growth area, absolutely. Okay. All right, some questions that you have submitted. We appreciate it. This is from Steve. He asks, what is the city doing to create an environment for the private sector to build affordable workforce housing that city staff can buy and be able to live in the city in which they work? You know, I think I probably know who Steve is. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this has been a a discussion item for the five years that I've been involved with the uh, city government and I think we're truly doing something about it now. We've established the Housing Commission, we've given them a lot of opportunities to discuss the uh, challenge of workforce and affordable housing in Franklin and uh, we're, this committee is very engaged in bringing uh, uh, options to us on a regular basis to the Board of Mayor and Alderman for us to consider. Next question. Would you share information about what the city does with the blue bag contents? I put mine out this morning, by the way. For example, how is it sorted, marketed, et cetera? Uh, go ahead. Sure. Well, first of all, thank you for those of you that are recycling using the curbside blue bag program. Mm -hmm. And, you know, 50% is a great number for a pilot program. And uh, diverting 15% of our solid waste by weight uh, is huge as far as saving money for the city. Uh, those blue bags are picked up by the city trucks and taken to a facility uh, over on Century Court where they're uh, sorted and prepared uh, and then sold as a commodity. Um, uh, so far, uh, there's no fee for us to do that. We hope that eventually when recycling reaches a certain level that we may actually get some return on our investment as far as what we're recycling. And the person said the same for the, the brown paper bags of yard waste, if you oh, could that's explain a, that. Uh, sure. <clears throat> um, those bags of yard waste, whether it's uh, grass clippings or leaves or twigs, uh, go to our composting facility here in the city. and. Uh, they compost this material and then it is available to the public uh, to buy and then we also use that same compost in our parks and around facilities in Franklin. Fantastic. All right, we have time for one more uh, from Dennis out in the audience. What are the educational priorities for the city of Franklin? Well, we don't have any, we're not responsible for the schools. So, uh, but education is a very component of our a very important component of our community and uh, we really appreciate the fact that Franklin Special School District uh, has a dedicated group of teachers just as our Williamson County Schools have dedicated teachers that do an excellent job and the private schools here in our community do a great job. Uh, as a city, uh, you know, I think that uh, our uh, efforts uh, to help facilitate that land purchase with Columbia State Williamson County campus mm -hmm. was a very important thing. I don't think that that purchase of that property uh, would, would have occurred if it hadn't been for city involvement and being very proactive in this process. It wasn't about money, it was about uh, a lot of complicated agreements that were involved as far as that piece of land. And, you know, our city is a has a group of people that work there that their attitude is not no, it's let's see how we can do it. So I think that's the attitude that we have going forward about education. Let's see how we can facilitate and help education in Franklin. Mayor, thank you, sir, for being here. Thank you, Rory, for participating. Thank you all. Have a great thank day, you. everybody.